you're watching Keto Rewind. <laughs> Today I am going to make you an awesome condiment. Who doesn't like ketchup? In fact, this one, this recipe, tastes better than the real thing. I, I won't even lie, I swear it's so good. Um, you can make this up ahead of time, store it in a bottle, pull it out when it's time to have burgers. Um, Any time that you would normally use ketchup, use this. So here's how I made it. <laughs> okay, so here's how you make it. You're gonna need just a small saucepan um, to pour everything in. Uh, you're gonna want powdered erythritol. I love the Swerve brand. I will link below where to get it. I buy mine on Amazon. So first off, you're gonna need a can of tomato paste. I go to Costco. Ooh, that is like a glare. <laughs> and I like the Costco tomato paste. You can buy like a 12 pack, I think it comes in. <clears throat> so let me open up my can here with a can opener. And the cool thing about this, you know exactly what's in your condiment. Condiments are a great place for food manufacturers to put sneaky ingredients like sugar. So by making your own, you know, ketchup, you're going to have a lot more control and you can easily bring this with you if you go eat out. Um, so what's one idea for you? <laughs> All right, so let's put our tomato paste in here. I'll go throw this can away. Give me a second. First, I'm going to throw the top on the floor and make a mess. <laughs> okay. Yuck, yuck. Okay, so you can, your one six ounce can of tomato paste. I got this recipe from wholesomeyum.com. I'll link that below as well. And you'll want one cup of water. I like to use filtered water. It just makes everything taste better. Get a cup of water. And then you're going to want a quarter cup of Swerve. I buy this swerve by like <laughs> the big pack. So I, you can either grab a quarter cup or four tablespoons equals a quarter cup. So, so one, I'll show you what this looks like <laughs> when we're all done. It's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, there's swerve. You probably know what tomato paste looks like, water. So we'll save you the silly details. And Four. And then our next one is three tablespoons of vinegar. You can do white distilled vinegar, or you can switch it up and do apple cider vinegar. Um, and also, I'm going to post this recipe down in the comments below. But three tablespoons of vinegar. I'm I'm for this one. I'm going to use white vinegar, but I love apple cider vinegar. Vinegar. It kind of gives me more of a barbecue flavor. So there's three tablespoons of white vinegar. One teaspoon of pink sea salt. If you haven't switched your salt to pink sea salt, you are missing out. And you're probably really sluggish and tired. <laughs> Make sure you switch to pink sea salt. So one of those. And then three quarter teaspoon of onion powder. There's a half, and I'm making this ketchup because we're having meatloaf tonight, and my kids won't eat anything without ketchup on it, <laughs> and plus they don't know any better. They love this, and it tastes better than Heinz. And then half teaspoon of garlic powder. I get my I get most of my spices from Costco. I like the quality, but. Kenzie's has good spices. You just want good quality ingredients. If you're pretty much eating like the, the filet mignon of foods when you take out so many food groups, <laughs> might as well make the ones you get to have count. 
paprika. This one's smoked paprika. This is going to be a little bit more, it's not a huge difference, but just a little smoky taste. But if you don't like smoked paprika, go for the regular stuff. But I'm all out of the regular stuff, so smoked paprika it is. You can use either one. <laughs> Plus it kind of gives it a tad bit of a barbecue flavor. And cloves, this is an interesting ingredient, but ground, man, it doesn't that glare. There we go, ground cloves. So an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. Ooh, these are whole cloves. Let me get the ground ones. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, right? Here we go. That's what I meant to show you. Ground cloves. <laughs> Be kind of funky in there with the whole cloves, right? So eighth of a teaspoon. I love cloves to begin with. Plus they're good for you. And last but not least, ground mustard. Dry ground mustard. And eighth of a teaspoon is a little hard because I have a quarter teaspoon, so. All right, let me transfer this over to the stove so you can see, and I'll be right back. All right, so the next step is transfer it to your stove and mix it all up. It's gonna need to simmer for like a half an hour, and that'll allow it to thicken and let everything all come together. So, I will be back. <laughs> when we get to that point but I'm just mixing it up with the whisk on the stove just to mix it all in and obviously I have it on low heat so I'll bring it up to a simmer but look at how yummy that looks already so I'll be back in a few all right while this is coming to a simmer let me show you what I'm going to store it in this is just a ball jar you get at your local grocery um, store. I have one of the reusable lids. You could use the one that comes with it. But just a glass mason jar. You stick it in the fridge and it's good for a while. I don't like, you could use a squirt bottle type, like a traditional ketchup bottle. But I don't like to use plastic unless I have to. So that's why I use the glass mason jar. But you can do, you know, however you want to store it. Obviously, if you have kids, it might be easier to use a squirt bottle, but for me, I'm going to store it in a glass bottle. And there you have it. I have mixed all the ingredients, and now we're just waiting for it to come up to a little bit of a simmer. Not quite a boil, more of a simmer. I'm going to cover it, and I'm going to leave it alone for about a half an hour. It'll thicken up nicely. You can see it now. It's already decently thick. But, you know, ketchup is just a little bit thicker than this, normally. So, I'll be back. I'm gonna... Alright, I just put a funnel on top of my mason jar. And by the way, I'm sipping on a Dasani lime sparkling water. So tasty! So, take that out. And all you do is just pour it in here gently. You don't want it to spill. So, just go slow. And then I just take a scraper and scrape the sides. <laughs> Sorry, it gets steamy. We don't want to waste all that good ketchup. And that's probably good enough. All right. And that easily filled this mason jar up about three quarters of the way full three quarters of the way full and there you have it delicious and I will let that cool and then I'll put the um, the top on so this is delicious I'm telling you right now you've got to try it let me see if I can zoom in for you that looked delicious <laughs> see you next time